Hi everyone and welcome to this video helping you keeping up to date with all of the latest and greatest cloud manager, cloud volume zone tap, cloud tiering, data sense and cloud backup has to offer. So let's kick it off. Okay, I'm going to start today with a facelift cloud manager just did and we actually moved all the services from the top pane to a left side navigation and that allows us to increase the number of services and to provide pretty awesome roadmap on that front. So stay tuned in the next few releases. What we did move from all services that was before is the timeline. The timeline is where we're auditing all of our different actions we're doing, if it's by user, by the system, that move under settings. Make much more sense. Okay, 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 okay. This is big. So until today, you couldn't get notification outside of Cloud Manager you know, other than licenses or maybe, you know, if you purchase specific drives. But today, you actually have a way to go into the bell, into settings, and then configure which recipients should get email notifications directly from Cloud Manager. And that's talking about everything under the bell. And what's new as well is that you can add recipients outside of Cloud Manager. So different users in your organization or even, you know, partners or integrators can get email notifications without getting actual permissions to your account. Let's talk about how to log in into Cloud Manager. In the past, you had SSO for any cloud offering, you know, Cloud Manager, Cloud One Santa, use the same SSO to log in into Cloud Manager or Cloud Central. And you had another SSO for the NetApp support side credentials. So from today, you can actually use your NetApp support side credentials and log in into Cloud Manager and use it to any of the different cloud offerings. So it's a single SSO for any NetApp offering. Finally, it's here. But if your company prefer to manage its own identity, you can identity federate the authentication to your company identity management server using the following protocol. I put also the link in the description below so you can use our self-service portal to configure Identity Federation today. Okay, this one is big. So from today, you can actually deploy a new CVO package in Azure called Cloud Volume Stone Tap Optimize. And it's optimized specifically for tier two applications and workloads, which means if you have a lot of capacity and not a lot of performance requirements, that's the package for you. It will be by far the most cost-effective package to run any tier two type workloads. It's super cheap. It's less than three cents per gigabyte total TCO for that deployment. And on top of that, we're calculating the different IO, the system in consuming, the total consumed IO. Okay, so more packages, more options, that's great, but more options can lead to confusion. So how do you select the right package for you? So you need to understand if your workload you're planning to run, it's a T1 or T2 workload. T1, for example, mission critical workload like databases, SAS application, Kubernetes workloads, for example, needs more performance. So that means it's or CVO professional or essential. If you need a dedicated backup from NetApp, which I highly recommend if using CVO, Go with a professional because that means all your backup will be included in the cost of that CVO license. But if you don't need a backup for some reason, I don't know, then Essential is the right option. So this is the tier one application. Tier two, more for, I would say, you know, testing environment, less performant environment, etc. So for that, you need to use or Essential or Optimal. So how do you know? Basically, if it's a high performance tier two environment, Essential is the right option because we're going to charge you for optimize for IO. But if you don't have a lot of IO requirements, for example, a disaster recovery target, or maybe a new scratching ground. So optimize definitely is the way to go. Okay, so Cloud Volumes on Tap 9.11.1 is now GA. You can go and freely install it across the different cluster you have and get all the amazing features and capabilities it was just released. If you don't know what included, go check out my latest video 
It includes a detailed explanation of all the major highlights. Check it out. And on top of that, we added more regions from the last release. So we have Azure West US3. On GCP, we have Madrid, Paris, Warsaw, and Zurich. Congratulations. Okay, so what is DarkSide? DarkSite is basically a closed environment without any outbound internet connectivity. So most of NetApp customer base running their data in a very sensitive environment. That's the core assets, that's their IPs. They want to protect it from the outside world. And for that, they're putting it in an internal environment without any external internet connectivity. And we call it DarkSite. Okay, so Cloud Manager until today had an only SaaS deployment. And for SaaS deployment, you need to have a connectivity from your environment to our SaaS layer. But for dark side, you don't need any external communication. So your authentication will be local and your entire connectivity, everything will be contained, all the permission will be contained within your environment. The good side that it's in your control for the better and the worse. And for the bad side, the SAS won't be able to keep you up to date. So you will need to make sure to maintain that connector and to upgrade it on a cadence. Cool. And with that release, we also consolidate the Cloud Restore instance for dark site environment. So we basically took the containers running in the Cloud Restore instance, moved it into the dark site connector, Sweep. And that's it. Basically, you can do a single file restore on dark side as well. Until today, cloud tiering allows you to connect your AFF or fast system from on-premise directly to the cloud and started to optimize your storage by moving cold blocks from expensive SSD drive to a cheap object store. That was always available to AWS, Azure, and GCP. But from today, you can actually use cloud tiering and to tier to any S3 compatible object storage. For example, Wasabi or any other one. Just choose your destination and optimize your storage costs today. Okay, DataSense, our amazing data government service, has a pretty awesome migration option. It can actually clean your data and get you full visibility what it contains before moving it to the cloud. So with this release, we can actually clean and move 100K files on a single batch. Pretty nice. We also moved the permission layer we're demonstrating from just files to files or maybe directories. So if you want to look in a specific directory and understand if it contains sensitive information, for example, or if it's permission, it's open for everyone instead of being limited, that's the way to go. And if you live in Indiana, Texas, or New York, you can now find your driver licenses in the data if it exists there. But DataSense will find it. Almost forgot about the study. Yeah, so our analyst team did an amazing study. And personally, I was super surprised by the result. But they actually found that if you're going to like this video and subscribe to my channel, the total number of likes to this video and total number of subscribers will go up. Yeah, so please like this video to share the love and subscribe to my channel to get all the new videos I'm going to post regarding Cloud Manager, Data Sense, Cloud Backup Service, Cloud Volume Soundtap, and Cloud Tiering. Enjoy until the next one. Peace.